Welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell Richards, where we will explore the complexities of compliance and how to ensure business success within your RTO. This podcast is for anyone within the training industry who wants to learn from my experience as an RTO consultant, RTO manager, trainer and assessor, and entrepreneur, as well as the experience of other experts in this field. Listen in and let us help you become the RTO superhero you want to be. Welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast, where we bring you the latest news, insights and tips for registered training organisations. Hi, I'm your host, Angela Connell Richards, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about the advantages of government funding for RTOs. Government funding is a key source of revenue for many registered training organisations in Australia, and it can provide significant financial quality, accessibility and employer benefits. In this episode, we'll explore these benefits in more detail, provide some strategies for accessing government funding, and highlight some examples of government funding programs for VET providers in Australia's states and territories. Let's start by discussing the financial benefits of government funding. As you know, government funding can help cover the costs of delivering training programs, including the cost of materials, equipment and personnel. This can be significant benefit for training organisations, especially those with limited resources. By accessing government funding, training organisations can deliver high quality training programs without compromising their financial stability. Another advantage of government funding is the impact it has on the quality of training. Government funded programs often have strict quality standards that training organisations must meet in order to receive the funding. These standards help to ensure that the training is of high quality and meets the needs of learners and employers. As a result, government funding can help improve the overall quality of training in a particular industry or sector. Government funding can also make training more accessible and affordable for learners, particularly for those that have not do not have the financial means to pay for training themselves. In addition, government-funded pro- training programs can provide additional support services for learners, such as tutoring, mentoring and career counselling. This can help learners achieve their goals and ex- succeed in their chosen career. For employers, government-funded training programs can provide a skilled and knowledgeable workforce. This can increase productivity, reduce turnover and improve the overall quality of work. In this way, government funding can support the growth and success of businesses and industries. Now, let's talk about some strategies for accessing government funding. To access government funding opportunities, training organisations should research the available funding programs and requirements for each program to ensure that they meet the quality standards set by the government. Developing a strong business case for funding applications is also very important, which should demonstrate that the training program that you are offering and the expected outcomes and benefits and the resources required to deliver the program are all in place. For some small businesses looking to grow and scale their RTO, accessing government grants can be a significant advantage. Many government grants are specifically designed to support the growth and development of small business. These grants can provide financial assistance for a range of activities such as research and development, training and business expansion. Now, when I talk about these type of government grants, this isn't the training uh, government funding where students get access to the funding. This is where you as a business get access to funding. Now, let's highlight some examples of government funding programs for VET in the Australian states and territories. In New South Wales, we have the Smart and Skilled Funding Program uh, and it provides support for VET. In Victoria, the Skills First Program. In Queensland, Skilling Queenslanders for work funding provides support for disadvantaged job seekers. In South Australia, the Work Ready Program provides support for VET. In Western Australia, the Jobs and Skills WA Program. 
In Tasmania, the Training and Skills Program. In the Northern Territory, the Skilling Territorians Program. All of the links for these different government bodies are in the show notes. These funding programs provide financial support for the delivery of training and can also provide additional support services for learners, such as career counselling, mentoring and work experience opportunities. To access these funding opportunities, training organisations should research the available funding programs and requirements for each program to ensure that they meet the quality standards set by the government and that their business case is strong and clearly demonstrates the need for that training program and the expected outcomes and benefits. It's worth noting that the government funding is not a guaranteed source of revenue, and many programs are competitive, so it's important to submit a high-quality application. Training organisations should also consider partnering with other organisations to increase their chances of success in accessing government funding. In addition to the strategies we've discussed, training organisations can also benefit from working with industry peak bodies who often have up-to-date information on government funding opportunities and can provide guidance on the application process. In conclusion, government funding opportunities for the training industry in VET are available in all Australian states and territories, and training organisations can benefit from the financial, quality, accessibility and employer benefits that government funding can provide. By accessing these funding opportunities, training organisations can support the growth and success of businesses and industries in Australia. Thanks for listening to the RTO Superhero Podcast. Don't forget to check the show notes with useful links and resources on this topic that we've discussed today. Tune in next time uh, for more insights for RTOs, where I'll be covering Profit First, how RTO managers and CEOs can transform their finances and build a more profitable business. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us at the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell-Richards. Please take a moment to rate and review the podcast on your preferred podcast app. Each rating and review helps me fulfil my goal of helping training organisations around Australia to learn and grow in compliance and business success.